and we need to discuss why does anyone in this city need to have a gun at all. As Toronto continues to reel and recover from the horrific shooting on the Danforth, news has just broken yet another shooting in Etobicoke. I'm here with Warren Kinsella, who, by the way, used to be a cop reporter back in the days when he was in law school trying to make some money. And also, of course, um, you know, one of Canada's most prolific political strategists and founder of Daisy Group. I want to sort of step back and, and look at what's gone on over the course of the last 72 hours. Your views on how the media in general have co has covered the Danforth shooting. Well, it depends on the media. Uh, another organization, which I will not name, mm -hmm. seemed to spend a lot more time preoccupied with the killer mm -hmm. than with the victims. And, you know, whether you're on the right or the left, mm -hmm. that's just inappropriate. Yeah. It's wrong. And, um, you know, I understand the need to figure out what was going on in that person's mm -hmm. mind, but we should be really more preoccupied with the victims. So it's really interesting, you know, sort of letting our, our viewers into the, the minds of, you know, newspaper editors when we're talking about what we're going to pick for the front page. Uh, so often, the person who perpetrated this, this crime does get, does get the attention because you want people to see um, what has happened. But in this instance, I know certainly for, for us at the Toronto Sun, we wanted to showcase these two beautiful young women who lost their lives in, in such short order and, and so unfairly, um, it helps make people understand just the gravity of what, what has happened here. Yeah, and in our case, I mean, we live just a few blocks, my family mm -hmm. and I, my kids, yeah. they live a few blocks from when this took place, and all of us go to the Danforth, you know, in the summertime, mm -hmm. and, you know, one of the first things that happens when you have teenagers, as we do, is you start getting in touch with your kids and texting them yeah. and saying, where are you? Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Make sure you're not, and that's not how we should be living in a city like this, in a country like and this. And for anybody that has ever come to visit to Toronto, if you have family or friends here, one of the places that they will always take you to is let's go hit the Danforth, go have some amazing food. It's, it's a great atmosphere, wonderful patios, just a lot of energy in that area. Um, I, I want to also sort of touch on um, not only just how the media has been covering it in general, but also how the law enforcement agencies sort of handled this in the first 24 to 48 hours. If we were in the United States, we would have seen some small town sheriff stand before the cameras probably for about six hours and answer question after question after question. In Toronto, in Canada in general with our law enforcement, they're very guarded, they're very tight-lipped, and to the point where we only got a press release saying it's only after all this interest in the public interest are we going to release the name of the suspect. What, what, what do you say to that? Well, you know, and it, there's a problem with doing police and media work in that way because what it does in the era of Twitter and Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. is it gives rise to exactly what happened which was a ton of speculation mm -hmm. about who did this whether another shooter was out there and so on and you see that whenever there's one of these situations and often I think the police and this is one of the things my firm does need some crisis communications mm -hmm. experience because what happened here is there were hour after hour where we're all wondering what was going on, and it was just, it was not working. Let's talk about um, the other sort of question mark in, in, in a lot of this, and uh, my colleague here at uh, Sun Media, at Toronto Sun, Anthony Fury, has done a really quite an extraordinary uh, an expose on the person that was the spokesperson for the, for the, for the suspect's family. Um, your views on that, look, you, you've been on the political side, you've been on the crisis communication side. It did it seem quite scripted to you, and, and, and very convenient as far as the timing? It not only seemed scripted, it didn't sound like the people who right. were supposed to be issuing it. You know, the cardinal rule of communications, especially in a situation like this, is to be authentic, mm -hmm. to be genuine. And that statement that was issued sounded like it had come from the fingers mm -hmm. of a spin doctor and not from the family of the shooter. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a big mistake. It rose suspicion and Anthony was able to get the scoop yeah. and break that story. And just finally we saw as always an, um, our political uh our political masters do nothing but react rather than pro be proactive. Toronto City Council talking about, yet again, um, banning handguns in, in, in this country, in this city. We've gone down this road before. How effectual is this, is this debate? Well, I mean, if you believe that politics is only about symbols, it's a good symbolic gesture, as you know and as I know. Sure, but the bad guys aren't registering They're their not, guns. I'm a, gun, <laughs> I'm a gun owner. That's right. If somebody, while I'm sitting here and speaking to you right now, breaks mm -hmm. into my place yeah. and steals my guns, those guns will be on the street. I've taken steps, trigger locks and sure. lockers and all that. 
But yeah, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. What I think is more meaningful, I mean, the two politicians have been most active on this file since the terrible events of Sunday night has been the Premier, Doug Ford, mm -hmm. and the Mayor, John Tory. Yeah. And the group that's been missing in action is the group that actually governs restricted weapons like handguns and rifles, which is the federal government. Like, wh where have, where they, have they been? been? And given the number of seats that they've got in the city of Toronto, I just find that shocking. They, were, they continue to give us their thoughts and prayers yeah. without actually doing anything. We never, of course, want to be alarmists. We, we know that we, li we do live in a safe city. These are, there are consequences for living in a big city like Toronto. There is, however, something in the underbelly of, of, of our, our residents right now. They, they sometimes they, they feel concerned. They see day after day something new, sh a new shooting, new, new act of horrific violence. How, how do you feel about uh, that as far as when people say, well, Toronto is a big city, and, but we're still safe? Yeah, one of the things the chief of police has been doing, he's been going out and telling the, tr the truth. Mm -hmm. He's been saying that violent crime, maybe with the exception of homicides, has been dropping. And that is absolutely true. In just about every major city in North America, except for Chicago, violent crime has been dropping. But I don't want to hear it. On right. Sunday night, when something terrible like that happens, just emotionally, you don't believe it. You don't want to hear that. You want to hear, what are you guys going to do to stop this? Right. And there are things that they can be doing, like a special court for guns, you know, creating more Crown attorneys to, to prosecute these crimes. The federal government taking some positive and active steps to deal with, you know, should somebody with mental illness, with diagnosed psychosis, mm -hmm. get his gangbanger brothers gun. How did that happen? Well, Why didn't they come and retrieve the gun? Absolutely. And, and even like things like sentencing reform. These are these are all big big picture conversations that have to happen within our social our uh, criminal justice system that aren't quite there yet. So we'll we'll continue to follow it. Log on to Facebook and Twitter, let us know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you want to hear more from Warren, you can log on and subscribe to his podcast, Kinsella Cast, and don't forget to follow torontosun.com for the latest.